Right. Now, my orbit is buggered. Um, so let's fix it. There are ways of doing this. Problem is, I don't really know what they are. Um, let's just try the old-fashioned way of... Nope, not that way. I'm holding the button all the way down, but it's not spinning easily. If we set it so that... Our heading is about zero degrees and burn. Or about 360 degrees, actually, and burn. That tends to work quite well for not circuit chasing what we call the orbital inclination. That is, we want the orbit to basically line up with the equator. Um, so let's set this to zero, the heading. See the bottom where it says HDG in degrees. Uh, we'll set that to 360 or zero. It's basically the same thing because of a circle. End of a circle is also its beginning. Oddly poetic, isn't it? Um, right, now I'm going to burn very slowly and watch the map. This should kind of rotate the orbit round. Oh, don't shrink. No, stop shrinking. Bugger. Bugger. Okay, let's not do that. Right, let's just try some orbital silliness then. Let's do this the old-fashioned way. Uh, wait till... Let's set the moon as a... Well, actually, first. I'm going to do something. I'm going to go to the space center. Why, you ask? You'll see soon. Go to the tracking station, which allows us to kind of monitor our spacecraft we currently have in orbit. And we go on to... I'm... well... There's the wreckage of the old Batman. Oh, well, escape trajectory out of the sun, because I fucked something up. Let's terminate that. And this one that's orbiting the moon. Let's terminate that as well. This way, A, you'll never see it, because then you have to... Basically, I've just covered my ass there that I should have done before the episode and got rid of the old Batman. But now it means I don't want to have two things orbiting the moon at the same time. That'll be a bit mental. Right, so now what we do is we jump on the moon and we go and set his target. And we get these things called ascending and descending nodes. These are points when we're basically on a line with the moon. So these are the best ones to do for, um, to use for aligning your orbit. That pink one is the one that changes your orbital inclination. So these are the best ones to do to try and line up. There! Got it! Brilliant. So that section there, when I hit there, I encounter the moon. And when I hit there, I escape the moon. So it's during those two times there I need to basically start doing moon things. Um, there's a lot going on here, but basically what I tend to do is... There are more precise ways of doing it. What I tend to do is just fuck around with these buttons until I happen to line up the moon. Uh, and that worked. Estimated burn, n slash a. That's not good. Um, oh, it's because it, it can't estimate the burn because I'm about to switch tanks and it knows that. I've got 23 minutes to line this up. You'd think I'll be able to do it in that time, wouldn't you? Oh, it's only just over there. Excellent. Stop spinning, it's so fat this thing. It's because I haven't got any thrusters on the bottom, so I'm only kind of spinning it from the top, so the torque on it is ridiculous. Uh, let's line up with that. That's pretty good. And hold that there, please. Hold. Stay. Stop. No, you shit. Uh, let's speed it up anyway. I'm bloody close to that thing anyway. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12. I'm doing a very queer orbit on Kirby. I'm not going to hit. Oh my god, am I going to hit? No, I'm not going to hit Kirby. I'm fine. Three, two, one, and... Eat. No! Ooh, I nearly missed it. See, that's what I mean about oh, abusing the speeder. Um, I'll dial up the burn in just a second. It reckons 24 seconds of burn, which I'm not going to get out of this engine. So, I'll have to adjust it. Yep, like I told you. Let's break off that. And start the burn on the next engine. Oh god, that, oh, that was cool. It launched away like that. So it reckons burn for, at this speed, it'll be 4 minutes on this engine. That's a big burn. But this engine, oh, you'll see how little fuel it uses. It's lovely. Um, of course, it means I've got to entertain myself for four minutes. Um, <laughs> not, not so much entertain myself as entertain you for four minutes. So what I'm going to do is bring up the nav ball there. Um, and you can see the timer at the bottom. So I'm just going to speed this section up. So I'm not going to say anything. And I'm going to put some music in the background. Enjoy. Hold on a sec, I just want to make sure the engine is about to overheat. Um, I hope it's actually better if it's all in that time, but see how little fuel it's used, these things are lovely. So 
So it turns out I was lied to, and I'm nearly at the end of the burn, and my orbit is never going to resemble that one because I fucked something up. I think I thought basically I was going to burn for strong longer than I was going to. So I'm going to line up some other stuff. Let's try this. Let's pull some levers and set that. Not that. Do it like that. Why not? No, I wouldn't know when the moon is my target. What are you doing, you stupid bugger? Uh, let's give that a little tweak that way and whip. No, not whip. Whip that way. And see if I can line this up with the moon. Uh, oh, we're close there. How close do we get? Um, ooh, within 2,000 kilometers, which actually, in terms of space, is pretty freaking close. Now, if I just dial this up here. Oh, we've got an encounter again. Excellent. Um, so, again, I'm going to actually try and make sure it does this this time. 40 minutes. Um, you know what? I'm actually going to. I'm going to do the burn first. Well, get a bit closer. But I think it's. These atomic rockets are very efficient, but they're better for doing burn at, um, for kind of long, slow periods, whereas that- Ah, Fucker, I missed it. Oh, that's a bastard. I missed it by two minutes because I was talking to you. God, you ruin everything, viewer. I'm kidding, I love you, really. Um, okay, let's just try and rectify that as best I can by just burning now. See how hard I can push this atomic engine before it explodes. Eh, eh, eh. Let's see what happens to the orbit. Who knows? We might still be able to not completely fuck this up. Uh, as I say, I'm not a fan of this orbital inclination that we're at. I think the orbit's kind of slightly changing its plane. It is, ever so slightly. You can see that end bit kind of bending down. Um, because of the precise timing involved here, that we might have missed the moon encounter, as and we might have to just basically wait for it to come round again, which it takes a bloody long time. Um, Generally, nope, we're looking pretty good though here. As in, we've still got half the bloody liquid fuel in there after that last three minutes of wasted burn time. Um, I I'm just going to watch this, and the moment it says I'm about to potentially encounter the moon, I'm going to stop and see. Because it should be this weird section here where the orbit curves. The reason it does that is because we're doing what's called a gravitational slingshot, as in we're in one orbit, we kind of wick around the moon, and then they're launched into another orbit. Um, so that's why our orbit kind of changes there from the... Blue is the actual, orange is the first predicted, purple is with the moon encounter, and green is the what it will be after we slingshot round the moon, which is what I'm aiming to do here. And you know what, that actually might almost line up. I might almost get me moon encounter here, which is cool. Um, let's push that until it's until it says I've done with the burn. Oh, uh, yes, I've got the moon encounter, just... Um, right. Now I'm going to talk you through this a bit. So basically, I'll come along here, then when I get to this point here... Um, uh, which is labelled Moon Encounter. I will technically be in the Moon's gravity, but because I'm moving so far past the way, it influences my gravity, causing that curve there. But then there, I escape its gravity and go back into orbit around Kerbin in this purple one, in a kind of much crapper orbit around purple, the Kerbin, not purple. Um, but when I get into this section here, if I burn towards the Moon in that section, that shortens that section, causing it to curve around until eventually we orbit the Moon. All sounds very good, doesn't it? So I'm going to speed up time a bit until I'm closer to it. As you can see, the blue bit disappears after I go past it because that's not an orbit anymore. That's just a track. Well, it is an orbit, but I'm going to hit the moon and it's going to throw me onto a different orbit so it know the game knows. Um, we'll have the speed up. No, it's the apoapsis, so we'll slow down here, which is good. So it means there's less chance of me missing it. How long until the moon encounters is it going to be? Five hours. Well, let's just keep an eye on that timer, I think. Um, easy, easy. I want to miss it again, though. I didn't actually fuck up that burn as much as I thought I did, as in it seemed fine in the end. So, oh, uh, well, that's just well, it could be any time in this orange point. We yes, we encountered the moon's gravity. Um, so yes, orange is now what my orbit will technically be. But you can see I'm kind of slingshotting around here, and I don't know what happens when I hit that point. I don't want to know what happens. But what we can do is if we basically just Set the moon as our target, which I can't do, because I'm technically already in its gravity, so of course I can't set it as my targets. So we use those little meters, um, the prograde and the antegrade ones. If I burn anterograde, which normally reduces your orbit, it reduces my orbits around here, hopefully until the point where it actually becomes a circle. Let's see. If we fire up burn here... See, it's starting to close up. My orange orbit's chasing side, because that's things it thinks the slingshot's changing. But what's actually happening is we're closing up this orbit around the moon. Um, 
this, so this is slowly bending around and that will come and touch where I am at the moment, making a circle. That one, as I say, the yellow one, that changes a lot. Um, because it thinks I'm doing crazy shit. Because I am doing crazy shit, in fairness. But it's still assuming I'm not going to ever circle around the moon. But I should. I'm not going to overheat the engine. Oh god, I'm going to overheat the engine. Buggers. Let's turn that down a bit. Don't want to overheat the engine. Right, wait for it, wait for it. It's about to touch, and when it touches, the yellow one will disappear entirely. Oh! I'm getting too excited. Hence the noises. Why isn't this not lining up yet? This is an ugly, ugly orbit. Oh, I'm not even in orbit. That's bad. <laughs> oh dear. Let's say that. Hey, oh, right. We've got an awful, awful orbit. As in, I'm just going to crash headfirst into the moon. Um, and I've already missed the apoapsis. So let's do some corrections quickly. Let's turn all the way around and thrust away from the moon. <laughs> this could get interesting. And I'm technically going to escape its grab. Fuck's sake. Right, gotta wait till I've got a decent periapsis above it. Then we wait till I'm closer to there. Speed that up a little bit. I'll wait till I'm closer to. Oh dear, dear, dear. Nearly did the thing again. I'll close it up here because I think I closed it up at the wrong part of the orbit, basically. Let's wait till I'm there. Oh, and stop. Now, if we look on the actual thing, we should be pretty damn close to the moon. Except I can't see it anywhere. Oh god, it's there! It's everywhere, actually. When I said I can't see it anywhere, I lied. Right, let's find the prograde, the retrograde burn again. Here we go. Let's line up with that. And start burning. And again, the orbit should start to close up, but from a much better angle this time. There we go! And now we just wait for the orbit to circularize a little. So basically, when these two are at the same height, this should happen without reducing that one too much. Let's dial the burn up a bit more. So we want that to be about 120. Well, it's basically, you can tell when you've circulated your orbit because the apoapsis and periapsis start spinning wildly. Um, you'll see what I mean. I'm going to just extend the orbit out a little bit for now. Let's go around here to wee all the way around here. See, the thing is, earlier I extended the orbit out, but I extended the orbit out to the point where, because the moon has much weaker gravity than Kerbin, so I extended it out to the point where I wasn't actually being influenced by the moon's gravity anymore, so couldn't get an orbit around it. Always a risk. This should just extend it a bit so I can circularize it better. Yep. And then let's go around to the other side. I'm learning orbital mechanics now, look at me. Um, then when I'm around at the other side... We're already facing prograde, which is good because we haven't rotated round, and we burn prograde for a bit to finish circularizing the orbit. So that's at 220, and that should be at 220 by the time we're done-ish. We're staying pretty constant there because we're right on the periapsis. Um, so when these two start spinning wildly, yep, there we go. We got it. We have got it. So that is a beautiful circular orbit around the moon. Um, and with, I think we're fairly low to it. Um, again, I've lost the moon. Yeah, it's there. Um, so if we speed up to as fast as we can go, we're still going around the moon pretty damn fast. That's kind of nauseating, so I'll slow down a bit from that, because we're quite high above it, so it's letting me. Um, but yeah, moon! So you can see us on this, if we zoom out all the way, and then we go all the way around it like that. Uh, the nav ball at the bottom is going completely ape shit, but we successfully will orbit the moon forever now. Pretty much forever. Um, so... Let's detach the engine, because I'm not going to do anything more with it. Engine. Detach. Oops. Nope. You don't want to, do you? Well, I'll do it manually, then. Eh. Oh, shit. Did I not even put a bloody decoupler on that bit? No, I did. I put a decoupler up there. I'm sure of it. I'm going to have to freaking burn the entire fuel tank first. Ah, it looks like I didn't actually put a decoupler on it. What is that, then? There's definitely something there. But you won't tell me what it is. Uh, maybe that wasn't a decoupler. Anyway, it doesn't matter. This is just an ugly ass satellite. Let's extend all of these, though. I can't extend these. Oh well. <laughs> okay, I fucked up a lot there. But, so that's, I say, satellite. We've basically got a bit of space junk floating around the moon. But we've got something floating around the moon. That's what matters. So basically, next week, I will be adding a little bit of stuff, stuff on top of that rocket. So instead of the satellite head, it'll have a lunar lander. To hopefully land on the moon and loon? land on the moon, and if we're bloody lucky, make a return journey. This has been a longer episode, so I might split it in two. I'm not sure. Um, but thank you very much for watching. I've been the Doctor with the Infamous Gentleman. This has been Kerbal Space Program, and I'll see you soon for a lunar landing. Good day.